So we thought it'd be a cool idea to sit down and talk about Reset Volume 1. It's not a chapter. It's a unique one-off kind of project that we did. Yeah. It was a challenge for us to stick to the guidelines we set out to do, but it was really rewarding. And it's a simple record. Yeah. We'll do it again. Maybe we'll do that. Okay. More, please. Yes. (laughs) Still going through puberty, folks. (laughs) Um. Maybe we're made for a time like this, counting each breath so we wouldn't miss it. Don't close your... Don't close your eyes. What is the Reset album? Why did we do that? Why did we do songs that have already been done? When my daughter Finley was six... We bought her this little guitar, and I bought it for her, thinking we could play some songs together, which we did for about two days, and then she lost all interest. (laughs) (laughs) So I started playing the thing left and right. I figured out how to play Obvious on it and just sent it to you kind of as a joke. (laughs) Working on some real good stuff over here. Big things. Don't tell me to calm down. Look all. If I remember correctly, we were doing Let the New Begin. Right. And I had my friend Tony's cello in the studio. Mm -hmm. I did a real quick demo with this little kid's toy guitar. Uh Uh-huh. And yeah, what would it sound like if we just had a few instruments like in a living room? Would this song be as impactful with nothing to mask it? Right. Very raw. There's nothing to hide behind. Right. And what a great challenge it was to try to have something really, really intimate. The O record by Damien Rice was a huge influence. Those songs are extremely exposed. Yeah, almost painfully exposed. Almost painfully. It's very awkward at times. That's kind of where some of the magic comes from. Yeah. So that's where my headspace was approaching this project. In picking these songs, we had to go through our catalog, almost return to the demos and go, what felt special? We're just resetting the whole scene. Yeah, you start from scratch. No tricks. I also didn't want this to sound produced. I wanted it to sound like we put up a mic in the living room and we play it and whatever you get, you get. Yeah. You know? And that's really exciting. It is. It's it's fun. We kept talking about this as we were tracking. Like, I don't know if everybody's going to like this, but I have a feeling this is going to be somebody's favorite thing. Yes. You know? And that definitely has proven to be true. It's interesting so. the kind of comments and messages that we get from people that uniquely connect with this. So, Copy for and fall in, fall in all in front of us. I think that obvious might be my favorite version of the song in Reset Volume. Really? Yeah. I don't know. I think I've only heard it one way because the way that song was written was you sent me tracks of strings and piano. It's like, it's always been this lush, big, wide. Yeah, the painting of of sounds, you know? Right. And I know what that song is about personally. Mm -hmm. And so it, it just makes a lot of sense to me to have it be really simple. And I think it just adds a totally different meaning to it. Some of the lyrics intensify and some of the lyrics take on a whole new meaning. You were right in front of me with the answer with the answer And you played these upright bass things on a cello. Yeah, it's a cello. Don't listen too carefully. It's kind of a mess. We tracked almost everything with the same mic in the same place in the same room. So there is a similarity in the feel. You hear the walls of the room. In the big tracking room at the studio here. Mm -hmm. Pretty high ceilings. I'll post a picture. Yeah. We had a bunch of friends in that same room. Yep. Stomping, clapping. We used that. And the little snare. Yeah. So that is actually my fingertips on a snare. Just... Is it really? Yeah, it's not It's not played by a drummer. I just, my hands barely, well, the, look the, at you. the mic is right on top of that snare and it's just, I'm just barely touching that thing, just kind of moving in circles. And that's the big marching drum in here? Same one we used all over chapter five. 
On this project, we invited our friend Daniel to play piano, and he knocked it out of the park. This is that piano in the big room uh -huh. here at the studio, and it is pitchy. Yes, and noisy. And noisy. But it sounds like your grandma's piano in the living room. Listen to that character. He did a great job. Of not overplaying. Right, and the touch. So we had him as a, a guest on the project, and then we had my friend Katie playing cello. Listen to this. And there's so much room in the mic. We had close mic on her, and then we had that same room mic. But we pretty much only used the room. Right. Yeah. This last note, listen to this. I love that it. harmonic that sticks yeah. out. Asked her to play as lightly as she possibly could. She'd play the same note on a couple different strings and parts of the neck. And yeah. we really explored kind of where was the most vulnerable, delicate sounding parts. And then she'd dig in with a bunch of vibrato and stuff on other notes. It was a blast. It pays to have good musicians, man. <clears throat> <laughs> now, honestly, the first thing I think of when recording these cellos though for this project was we were doing that session. You were engineering. And I was kind of on the talk back. And then in the middle of the session, you got a phone call mm, mm -hmm. and had a family mm -hmm. emergency. Something was wrong with Rowan. That's right. It was really scary. It was. Yeah. Yeah, we went straight to the ER and I spent the day there. So I missed a lot of what you guys did here. She killed it. I put some auto harp on this tune. Yeah, talk about that. I think this is that free auto harp app on my phone. <laughs> How did you actually record this? It's just an auto harp that you can swipe on your phone. But you can choose different chords. Of course, it's a free version, so you've only got one key. <laughs> so I had to play in the wrong key, and then I had to transpose it. I just love that there's a phone app on like our broken down, super in-your-face organic. I know. Yeah. <laughs> we tried as you, much as we could. but You blew it. <laughs> and I did put reverb on it, like a really, really good grimy plate reverb yeah. that helps put it in the room. You're still a cheater. There's also this Celeste that is subtle. Yeah. Sounds like a glockenspiel, but it's a Celeste. I have an actual glockenspiel okay. that I used for this project, but not on this song. Okay. Unless, actually, well, this says Celeste Glock, so maybe it's layered in there. I love you can hear the squeaky chair and stuff. My favorite part of that whole song is the outro, is the very last 10 seconds of the song. Things start kind of derailing. Mm -hmm. The timing of the drums goes a little bit. The acoustic guitars are now off and it just slows down. And, and the final vocal is yeah, right here. Won't you stay with me, here with me, stay with me, here with me, stay with me, here with me. I don't know how to articulate it. I know that I wanted it to be a little bit of a disaster. Not so pretty. Right. Not like tied up in a bow. You know what I mean? Yeah. That ending, that repeat sounds like pleading. You just leaned all the way into that. Yeah. And I was a little nervous to do that. And not that we've hidden our story or you know, anything that we went through as a family. I don't know. You can go too far. We are like, okay, guy, we get it. And life is hard or whatever, you know? And that wasn't the goal. I think just to be extremely vulnerable with this one and to present it in a way that's uh, just not sugar-coated at all. In the real version, those verses sound really hopeful. Like, maybe we were made for this, like, Definitely. hope. And I think this one's like... It's a little more desperate, a little more helpless, hopeless. Right. And, and that's what you deal with in the ICU. Don't close your eyes. This is another one that people have connected to this uniquely during the COVID-19 quarantine time. People have reached out and attached to this in, in different ways. It's fun. It's a fun experiment to reimagine things and present it in a different light. Yeah. Don't close your, don't close your eyes. 
Let the New Begin. It's a crazy tuning. Yeah, what is that? I forget. I don't know, but it's down low. It is low. It's so low that it won't stay in tune at all. Yeah, I also like this. What's all that? It's just some different toms and stuff that I found in the studio. Playing really light with my hands. That loop in the background, same instruments, but affected and delayed. Yeah. And it gives it a little bit of a pulse without having it be a part, you know, uh-huh. like a drum part. Between the two of us, we got a good collection of percussion, tambourines, shakers, and sounds. This is the end, just the guitar. I like that blend. We didn't want to quite get to dashboard confessional, kind of just beating <laughs> yeah. soup out of the guitar, but we did want to emphasize this with a lot of elevated emotion for sure. Yeah. So I played that picking guitar and you were doing that strumming. Gosh, it's bringing back some memories. Yeah, this piano. <laughs> That's raw, man. Crazy, right? I think we took a bunch of different tries at that just to get it really quiet. Like, yeah. Can you play quieter? Can you play quieter? And that's the hard part is you'll play some of the chords at the same volume, then one will just jump out and ruin the whole take. You're like, right. Oh, okay. Mechanically, that piano is just so noisy. But this is my favorite piano part and one of my favorite parts of this song. This is the end. While we're there, this vocal is everything. With every breath we take, we let the new begin. Settle down, guy. It's so pretty. Yeah. This ending turned out really nice. Here's my glockenspiel, my little kid's glock. Here's the other thing we didn't talk about. We wanted to do this whole project in a week. Which we failed at. Miserably. But we gave it a really good try. (laughs) (laughs) And that's half the battle. That's true. I look forward to doing Reset Volume 2. I want to take some older songs. It'd be fun to do Chapter 1 song. Like yeah, a child, child, or something that'd be cool. Yeah, it's fun, and why not? So it'll be cool to do reset volume two. Maybe we should have people vote. On we should. Songs. That'd be fun. That'd be interesting. What they come up with? <laughs> Maybe we'll do the next one in five days instead of seven. You have me. It's not gonna happen. Thanks for listening. We have a lot more of these episodes coming soon, so make sure to hit subscribe and follow. You can always find the latest information on the podcast and all of our new releases at wearechapters.com.